Not necessarily, no. The system with an ambulance New Brunswick and having them out on the site. Folks, there's a couple of other people who have arrived late and I'd like to introduce them. First of all, it's Dr. Mike Alex. Down over the hill here this morning, go into the construction site. It is active, as you can see, uh, with what's going on. And we're going to take a stroll into the linear accelerators expansion to take a look at one of the uh, treatment bunkers. Uh, it is cordoned off, so uh, I'll ask for you to be careful. Uh, it is, as I say, under construction. This project on our right here, being the linear accelerators project, is uh, approximately 75 percent complete uh, overall. We have the actual linear accelerators arriving uh, here at the end of the week to be uh, started in their initiation of uh, startup and the like, and the continued construction beyond that. To our left is the uh, new emergency department, and uh, as the Minister Gordy has indicated, the scale of it is uh, significant. Uh, we are currently at about, uh, I'll say, 99% of the structural steel contract or a phase. There's a phase construction, uh, there are five phases to it overall, the last one being awarded, as just noted, uh, for the main contract, just nicely getting started. So, what we'll take you through, we'll kind of void the large steel portion of it, we'll take you into the bunker for a quick view and uh, questions and the like as we go forward. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone here this morning, and um, this is quite, quite a sight, isn't it? Um, as you know, it took me a while to find my way around, so... Uh, the road was very impressive, but uh, this is an important day um, for um, the province of New Brunswick as the, uh, the Minister of Majority will announce the tender as um, we'll the new um, accelerated linear um, components of uh, project worth $50 million in total for this uh, whole project. I had the uh, pleasure last week to be in Moncton and they did, we did the official opening of their ER and I'll tell you when it's all done and complete, it's certainly something to see. So uh, congratulations and uh, I'm, I'm anxious to see what's uh, happening. You, you, it's never, you put your money there but sometimes you never see it till the end so this is the way I get a chance to see some of it being built. So thank you and I'm going to let uh, Mr. Gordy talk about the details on the tender. Well, thank you very much, Mary, and uh, also to my left, of course, we've got uh, Minister Stuart Jameson, Minister of Tourism. Thank you for coming along, Stuart. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here on this uh, bright, sunny morning, and uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure for any of you who are not from St. John to welcome you here, uh, especially to the uh, St. John Regional Hospital and the uh, UNBSJ campus, which is right behind us. As you know, the uh, UNBSJ campus and uh, this hospital uh, our, our partners in our new uh, Anglophone Medical School. So that's uh, a very, very exciting uh, development. And with us today, we've got the dean of the, our new medical school, uh, Dr. John Steese. So John, welcome. Uh, the, uh, I also would like to uh, welcome uh, various officials from Avondale, including uh, Bill, our president, who have been awarded this $19 million contract for the work that uh, we're about to see here today. Uh, as you know, this is part of a $50 million investment in, uh, in the uh, St. John Regional Hospital. The St. John Regional Hospital provides tertiary care for all of New Brunswick and even really parts of uh, Atlantic Canada. Uh, we're leaders in uh, research, we're leaders in innovative things, and uh, hopefully we're going to be leaders in uh, construction of uh, this wonderful project. Uh, so without uh, further ado, I welcome, I especially welcome the people of my department, the Supply and Services. Our job is to manage these uh, big projects. We have some 400 projects on the go uh, throughout the province, uh, but uh, it, these uh, health care projects are really dear and near and dear to my heart. Uh, coming uh, from a medical background. As a matter of fact, when I saw the new emergency uh, room in uh, Moncton, I almost thought about giving up politics and going back to emergency medicine. But uh, that was just a, mo a momentary uh, 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 idea. So, anyways, thank you very much for coming out today. Thanks for bringing the sunshine, and uh, we'll look forward to the tour.
to say, folks, it's a relatively confined space that we're going to be visiting here with a fairly, I'll say, average-sized group. Uh, we're going to take a quick tour into the treatment bunker. The first space that we're going to walk through this opening is the control room that has the uh, control of the actual accelerators when they're in operation. Uh, other parts, as you can see, as I said, it was an active working site. So we have uh, associated office space. Talk with the folks. I'm going to try to keep everybody off this central desk. This is one of the locations for the linear accelerator. It doesn't like people or other things sitting or standing on it. Okay, but that you find a look at this space itself. Um, approximately a thousand square feet of space. Uh, the perimeter edge, we'll talk a little bit about the ceiling here in a second. Perimeter edge are uh, cabinetry and casework to contain various elements in, in the treatment of uh, the folks having radiation treatment here. One of the things that we've tried to do as architects on the project is to contain it. We're trying to make this as good of an experience as it can be. Uh, and as you can be aware, it's not in that sense. I'm sure most of the people have will come in here for treatment would like to just leave. So saying that, what we've tried to do is we've tried to enclose most of the things. One of the other areas in the, throughout the country here in Canada, you will notice that if you were in other spaces like this, a lot of things are open. So you walk into a space like this, it becomes very clinical in nature. We've tried to do is hide it, okay? So that people don't see other people's things that are going on. There's a fairly significant amount of treatment that goes in these spaces. The other component is we walked in and we all looked up and we saw the ceiling. Uh, the component of it is to relax the mind and anxiety for patients that are coming into the facilities. It's been known to do that throughout North America, so we're trying it here and, and uh, doing it in St. John. Both of the treatment bunkers will have that type of ceiling system in it. And what it tries to do, needless to say, is most people as they walk into the space drew their eyes to the ceiling. When you, if we were coming back in here in a few months' time, this room is pretty well encapsulated by a very large piece of equipment, okay, which is a, a bit daunting to begin at the first first of it overall. So that's what we've tried to do and we've been successful, I hope, in doing that. Uh, and we're well on our way. As I noted outside here this Friday, the uh, crates with the various components of the linear accelerators will arrive and we'll be starting the uh, install of those over the next several years. As I said earlier, structural steel is sitting about 95% or so, or a little better than that currently. Just started into the phase five main contract for the project. That's the final portion of it from our perspective with the Marlins here at Avondale Construction. First level, as we said, the main emergency department. We walk by with the ambulance garage. That next level up, which looks like a roof and will be a roof, with a component in the area of the future second floor. Just nicely getting started. The area that you're standing in here now with the rock faces and the light is quite honestly in the routine itself. And in the final phase of this particular project, the material will be all grasped in and finalized. called interstitial space. That is where all of the mechanical and electrical resources are and drop down into the spaces within each of the areas within the hospital. So we have mechanical ductwork, sprinkler lines, electrical lines, all into that kind of large truss space up above that. It also affords this future renovations within the hospital so we don't contaminate other areas. You can consider if it didn't happen here, we disrupt the medical care that actually would go on with those ongoing treatment areas within the hospital. So this has continued the same design within the hospital itself as much as the, the area that here for the linear accelerators has become a combination area. 
It has an interstitial space, not unlike this one, as well as the more traditional spaces because we never envision actual future second floor. Over. So that's kind of the unique properties here of the top.